fitted to many cargo ships and offshore installations, freefall lifeboats are an effective way to abandon ship rapidly and in any weather conditions. In an emergency, the freefall lifeboat can be quickly prepared, boarded and launched. And in a matter of minutes, you'll be at a safe distance from the ship and protected from the hazards of fire, weather and exposure. Your first encounter with the freefall lifeboat will be during your familiarization tour on joining the ship. You'll be shown how to board the boat safely and how to use the seat restraints correctly. In some cases, you'll be allocated a specific seat that you should go to in abandoned ship drills and in real emergencies. Freefall lifeboats are easier to make ready than conventional lifeboats with on or offload release systems. But accidents do happen. In most cases, these are the result of inadequate maintenance, lack of experience with the equipment, or unsafe practices during drills. Drills are, however, a vital opportunity for the crew to gain experience and to increase their confidence that systems will work in an emergency. Drills can also be used to evaluate the crew's competence and whether more on-board training is needed. Regular abandoned ship drills are also required under SOLAS, the International Convention for the Safety of Life at Sea. Each month, a mustering drill must be held, where, on hearing the abandoned ship alarm, everyone proceeds to stations and prepares for the duties described in the muster list. The lifeboat engine must also be started and operated. Every three months, all personnel must board the lifeboat and secure themselves in their seats. The lifeboat is then either freefall launched with only the operating crew on board or it's lowered into the water by another means, usually the davit A-frame and with or without the operating crew on board. In both cases, the lifeboat must be manoeuvred in the water by the operating crew. At least every six months, the lifeboat must either be freefall launched into the water or a simulated launch may be carried out in line with guidelines developed by the International Maritime Organization, IMO. Regular drills help reinforce training, but to avoid accidents, they must be carefully planned and organized, as per the ship's safety management system, SMS. As part of the planning process, a risk assessment should be drafted and reviewed, covering every aspect of the drill, from mustering to preparation, boarding, launching, recovery and stowing. The risk assessment will depend on many variables. Some items to consider should be the type of lifeboat, the location, weather conditions and sea state, available sea room and the means of communication. All measures to control or eliminate the hazards should be identified and recorded. The risk assessment should also be dynamic or adaptable to change. For example, permission to carry out any launch exercise, either alongside or at anchorage, will need to be obtained from the terminal or local port authorities. And they could impose certain restrictions on where, when and how it may take place. The weather could also change. Keeping drills as realistic as possible will challenge people 
but the safety of the participants must always come first. And whichever type of drill, it must be accurately logged, with the records retained for examination by Port State Control and other inspectors. So what I have observed On completion of the drill, a debriefing session should be held with those who took part. The lessons learned can be used in future safety discussions and when planning subsequent drills across the fleet. During an abandoned ship drill, all personnel go to their emergency muster station. The lifeboat will already have been prepared for launching by the operating crew. This will normally be three people. The coxswain, a second crew member and an engineer. Before you enter the lifeboat, take off any bulky, non-inflatable life jackets. Wearing one will make it difficult to board the lifeboat or to be secured properly in your seat. Depending on the design of the seat, hard hats should also be removed. Don't carry anything else that you haven't been given specific instructions to take on board. Boarding must be done quickly and in sequence, starting from the bow and going upwards to the stern. If the lifeboat is not full, the operating crew will distribute people evenly throughout. In a real abandoned ship situation, this will allow the boat to launch safely and remain favorably trimmed and upright with positive headway. Remember, the operating crew are in charge of boarding and you should follow their instructions closely. And as there's little room to move inside, it's important that boarding is done in a calm and orderly manner. Once seated, you must stow your life jacket and hard hat and strap yourself correctly into the seat harness and the head restraint if fitted. Sit well back, relax and look straight ahead. Don't curl up. Your seat has been specifically designed to protect you from the impact with the water. With everyone aboard, the coxswain secures the door and proceeds to his own seat and straps in. The coxswain will be responsible for operating the primary release mechanism, positioned by their seat. The coxswain then checks that everyone is safe and secured. If they are, the lifeboat is ready to launch. Everybody okay? If you're not okay, so you're not okay. Okay, Ted. Drill is over. You can come out the boat now. Yeah. During a boarding drill, it's at this point you'll be asked to disembark, as only the operating crew are involved in an actual launch drill. But of course, in a real abandoned ship emergency, you'll stay in your seat. Everybody okay? Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay, boys, here we go. When the lifeboat launches, you'll experience weightlessness for a few seconds. That's it, boys, we're in. Once the lifeboat is in the water, don't leave your seat or undo your seat harness until you're told to do so by the operating crew. Anyone moving around in the lifeboat makes handling difficult and can endanger everyone inside. Freefall lifeboats are extremely strong and will float even if there's a considerable amount of water inside. And the fact that they're enclosed means you'll be protected from wind, rain and waves and any harmful vapours or fire while waiting for rescue. The crew designated to operate the lifeboat hold the lives of everyone entering the boat in their hands. So it's vital that they're fully competent in all aspects of its preparation and operation. 
To help achieve this, their duties should be rotated every two to three months. They must be confident of their roles during the three main phases of an abandoned ship drill. Preparation, boarding and launching. Preparation begins with a review of the risk assessment. There must be sufficient water depth and the location must be clear of other vessels and obstructions such as mooring lines and debris. Once it's confirmed that it's still safe to proceed, a pre-launch briefing or toolbox talk is held to make sure the operating crew understands the procedures and commands in the event of an emergency. Good communication between the operating crew and the deck crew must also be established and maintained throughout the exercise. Preparing the lifeboat for launching should be practiced regularly even if the drill is only taken up to the boarding stage. Firstly, it should be checked that the release mechanism has been properly reset and that the lifting yoke has been disconnected after the last recovery. Slings and wires used for recovering the lifeboat should also be thoroughly inspected and made secure. The lifeboat should then be disconnected from the ship's power supply. If over and under pressure valves are fitted, these should be checked and the entrance door opened. Once inside, the boat's electrical system is switched to battery power. The engine must start and the fuel tank must be full. Rudder function should also be tested, with the helm left amidships. Any windows or hatches should be closed and secured, and all supplies properly stowed. Outside, the freefall ramp must be clear, and the grab line should be secured to the boat, so as not to foul on anything during release. Finally, the securing arrangements that keep the boat at the top of the davits are released. During boarding, see that everyone has removed their life jacket and hard hat as required. Remember, make sure that everyone enters the lifeboat in sequence, starting from the bow and going upwards to the stern. Check that everyone is correctly strapped in and sitting back in their seat, and that all equipment brought on board is securely stowed. This includes life jackets, emergency radios, EPIRB and SART. The coxswain should also check that the seat next to the emergency release device is occupied by the person assigned to operate it. This functions as an emergency backup in case the main release device should fail. Where a drill is to include a free fall launch into the water, this will be carried out with just the operating crew on board. The coxswain must check that the other members are evenly distributed throughout the boat to allow it to launch safely. Once everyone is in place, the coxswain closes and secures the door. They then proceed to their own seat, climbing into position and strapping in. In a real abandoned ship situation, the coxswain would remove the locking pin from the release hook before closing the lifeboat door. But in a drill, the pin is removed by a member of the deck crew. After confirming that the helm is amidships, the coxswain checks by radio that the locking pin on the release hook has been removed. Yeah, okay there, I'm taking the pin out now. They then remove the safety pin of the releasing lever. When the coxswain operates the release lever, the lifeboat will be released from the mechanism holding it at the top of the freefall ramp. Okay, boys, here we go. The momentum takes the lifeboat some distance from the ship. 
During an emergency, the coxswain would make a course to a position of safety, close to the position of the incident, so as to assist rescue. Freefall lifeboats on board tankers and in offshore installations are fitted with a water spray system and self-contained air support system that will give extra protection in the event of a sea surface fire. The sprinkler pump must be run whenever there's a fire close to the boat. For this reason, the water spray system should always be tested whenever the freefall lifeboat is in the water. Alternatively, the drill may be planned as a simulated launch. Simulated launching trains the crew in the release procedure and tests the functioning of the hook mechanism without actually letting the boat free fall into the water. In most cases, the lifeboat is attached to the David A-frame and then lowered to the water with or without the operating crew on board. However, as designs vary, it's vital that the manufacturer's instructions are strictly followed when carrying out any simulated launch. The preparations for a simulated launch will be similar to those for a real launch. Port permissions will still need to be granted. Before the exercise begins, a toolbox talk is held. The officer in charge must confirm that everyone fully understands the procedures for carrying out the simulated launch. Some manufacturers provide devices that can hang off and restrain the lifeboat from being fully released. These must be in good operational condition and securely in position when starting the drill. Make sure too that the free fall release device is fully and correctly engaged. If the lifeboat is also to be lowered by the Davit A-frame, the electrical supply should be disconnected and the yoke lowered and strops attached. In this exercise, only one member of the operating crew will be aboard the lifeboat during the simulation, using either the primary or the emergency release levers to carry out the release. Once everything has been confirmed as secure, the Davit A-frame is put under load. Under the control of the officer in charge, the release device is activated. As they are pumped, hydraulic pins push the lifeboat away from the mechanism holding it at the top of the freefall ramp. The lifeboat is effectively released but held from launching by the hanging off or restraining device. Okay, it's okay now. Uh, it has released. Uh, you, can, uh, you can release the pressure now. You can it. On completion of testing, the lifeboat is returned to its stowed position. The operating crew member then disembarks, and any securings or hanging off devices that are used for simulated launching are removed. The lifeboat can then be lifted from the free fall ramp and lowered into the water using the Davit A-frame. This operation requires considerable care to be taken so as not to damage the lifeboat or Davit. More information on carrying out simulated free fall launches can be found in the accompanying work. Bringing a lifeboat up after it has either been launched or lowered into the water can be a challenging operation. To avoid damaging the lifeboat, it must be carried out extremely carefully. Recovery should be included in the launch risk assessment, and each aspect of the operation should be carefully thought through and actions taken to address each hazard. 
It's also good practice to have nobody in the lifeboat during recovery. Once a lifeboat is ready to be recovered, the davite frame is turned out and the falls and yoke are lowered. The operating crew then connect the yoke straps to the lifeboat's recovery slings. There must be clear communication between the coxswain and the operating crew, as the lifeboat must be held steady and the straps and falls must be kept vertical. Once the yoke is connected and the lifeboat is held under load, the operating crew begin to transfer to the rescue boat. With everyone disembarked, the lifeboat is then hoisted up to the top of the davit A-frame until the limit switch or pressure valve stops the lift. It's important that the winch operator has good visibility of the lifeboat. If not, it may be necessary to post a lookout. Great care must be taken in recovering the lifeboat so as not to cause any damage to the fiberglass hull. Having completed hoisting, the davit A-frame is turned in and the lifeboat is slowly lowered onto the freefall ramp. Once any freefall lifeboat has been recovered, it must be stowed correctly. The release device must be re-engaged and reset according to the manufacturer's instructions. The safety pin, if fitted, is replaced. The lashings are secured around the lifeboat and the lifeboat battery is reconnected to the ship's power supply. The yoke is then disconnected from the recovery slings and stowed. Finally, there's a check of the hull, especially the bow. The lifeboat is then ready for its next launch. Many freefall lifeboat accidents could have been avoided if the boats and equipment, such as wires, had been regularly inspected and correctly maintained. Annual and five yearly thorough examinations can only be carried out by a lifeboat manufacturer's representative or another authorized service provider. But routine weekly and monthly SOLAS inspections must be planned and made by the ship's crew under the direction of a senior officer. The inspections must be accurately logged with the records made available for examination by port state control and other auditors. The manufacturer's maintenance manuals and the ship's SMS should be used as the basis for routine inspections. For example, check the hook or release arrangements and any associated lashings or securings. Inside the lifeboat, check that the battery system is charging correctly. Then, disconnect or isolate the main supply before opening the battery bay. Inspect the batteries and terminals for signs of leakage or corrosion. Battery power should then be switched on and the engine run ahead and astern for at least three minutes or as per the ship's procedure. Both the helm and emergency steering should also be tested. On completion of testing, the rudder must be left amidships. The condition of external hatches and doors should also be checked. They should open freely, but also seal securely when closed. If over and under pressure relief valves and air bottles are fitted, you'll need to inspect the valves and the air bottle pressures inside the boat. Before starting any maintenance work, the tasks should be risk assessed to identify hazards and to put in place the necessary control measures. 
These might include the use of safety harnesses, work slings and restraining devices, and only carrying out the work when the vessel is in port. The maintenance work must be completed in accordance with the manufacturer's specifications and should not only cover the lifeboat itself, but also the release device, ramp, davit A-frame, yoke and wires. Wires, in particular, should be regularly inspected and greased thoroughly. Greasing shouldn't be restricted to just those wires exposed on the drum. Grease must also be applied to wires that are usually hidden or inaccessible, even if it means removing sheathing or flaking the lines. Parts should only be replaced with approved spares, with more extensive repairs completed by the manufacturer. With inspection and maintenance carried out regularly and thoroughly, crew members can take part in an abandoned ship drill knowing that the free-fall lifeboat and its equipment will perform as they should. <laughs> Safety is the absolute priority during free-fall lifeboat operations. Drills should be seen as a learning experience not just a legal requirement. Drills are a valuable means of evaluating crew's familiarity and identifying their specific training needs. Boarding, launching and recovery procedures must be thoroughly risk assessed. Boarding must be prompt, calm and performed safely. Everyone must be correctly strapped in. Special care must be taken in the lifeboat's recovery. Regular lifeboat inspection, maintenance and testing are mandatory. Training and familiarization through frequent, realistic drills will lead to successful and effective lifeboat procedures. <laughs>